Hello, this is Angela with Progress Permaculture. I'm sitting in the shade garden here in my Portland, Oregon permaculture food forest, and we are in zone 8B. Now I'm in this part of the garden, but I'm actually looking at the part just beyond it right here because today I wanna to talk about the concept of the edge effect and how we use it to enhance diversity and resilience in our gardens. So in ecology, the edge effect is this whole concept where you have two distinct biomes, you have two distinct landscapes that have different um, conditions and different ecology and different weather and different anything. They're just two distinct and diverse uh, areas that abut each other. And the overlap between those two areas the overlap of those two systems is the edge. And what happens in the overlap of those two systems is that you get increased diversity. You get a unique set of circumstances that contain elements of both of the biomes on either side of the edge. Permaculture principle says to use the edges and value the marginal. The margins of our gardens are places where we see increased diversity. So we should learn how to harness those. We should learn to increase the number of edges in our landscape. And not only that, but look at the edges where we have different parts of our garden touching each other and observe what is happening and see if there is an opportunity there to increase diversity even more. There are many, many areas in my garden where I think about the edge, where the path abuts the garden bed is a great one, where I have that area of openness of the path, and yet I have the area of the full bed. The edge in between those is where I have a great opportunity to grow a huge diversity of low-lying plants that can't exist farther back in the bed because they'll get smothered and obviously don't exist in the path. The edge we're talking about here is a sweet spot where plants and other wildlife can proliferate along that edge. What we're getting along the edge is we're getting a unique set of conditions that have a little bit of both sides and allow for plants and other wildlife to thrive along that little overlap that couldn't thrive on either side as well as they could in the middle. And we're also getting plants that do very well on either side and can continue to exist in the middle. There's enough of the set of circumstances that they need to grow still existing in the overlap that they can do very well. So you're getting some plants and some species from either side of the margin, and then you're getting unique plants that only do well in the margin. So wow, it's like a triple bang for your buck, right? So I'm looking at adding up all of those margins and realizing what a huge amount of space they take up in my garden and how the more I can create margins, the more I create opportunities and unique growing conditions. Now, I don't have time to go over all of them in this video, but I would encourage you to walk your garden and to look for those places where you ha may have shade, a budding sun, where you may have a area of poor drainage abutting an area of great drainage. Actually, let me break away here for a second and show you a place like that in my garden. So in a small garden, like my garden here, when you have these really tiny concentrated kind of mini microbiomes that you've created, where you are trying to mimic systems in nature, but often on a much smaller scale, you have a lot more transitions. You have a lot more margins to utilize. You have a lot more of those edge effect opportunities granted on a smaller scale. So here we're seeing this area low lying in my rain garden. This area here is very wet. It collects huge amounts of water that will fill the rain garden all the way up above the bridge and then it will rapidly sink into the ground as it runs downhill into my veggie beds, which are designed with swales. But because I have this area that's low lying, frequently wet, and then the way the rain garden is designed, I get down on the level with it here. We move uphill. And on the back end of the rain garden, it's very dry actually. And we have a path abutting it on this side. And over here, we have a path abutting it on this side as well. See, so we have down low, we move up the hill 
and then we have a dry path. And so we have this really transitional situation going on here where we have the opportunity to grow a lot of plants. We have an opportunity for a ton of diversity. As you can see, the rain garden is really diverse. I can grow plants down in the bottom that are strictly those kind of really water loving plants that can handle wet feet like my Japanese iris, like my native blue eyed grass, like these rushes here. And then as we move up, we start to see plants that do well in both areas of high water and can tolerate the drier conditions on the back end. So we have our native coastal strawberries. I have Jacob's Ladder. I have Master Wart. I have Clover that can all handle quite a array of conditions. And so they thrive down in the bottom and all the way up the mound, all the way over to the path. And then on the back side, although they're still quite little, I have plants that really like those drier conditions. So they're just coming up. But I have all my echinaceas. I have down here, I have coreopsis. I have things that do well in hotter and drier circumstances on the back. So I'm really, really getting that edge effect in my rain garden because I have here with just a few square feet, I have the transition from really dry path to a high mound that's dry but full of plantings down into an area that has quite a bit of water. And I can grow so much. One of the things I really love about my rain garden is the potential for a huge amount of diversity here. Okay, so we're back from looking at the rain garden. Let's think about what other edges we can expect and experience and how we can look at how we can harness them. So we might look at an area of high annual cultivation next to an area that is more food forest. What can we put on the edges there? Look at an area that is perhaps pasture where you're grazing livestock that abuts a more wooded area. That margin is a wonderful place to create a hedgerow. Think about a traditional hedgerow and the incredible amount of food producing diversity that can exist there. Hmm. Think about a hedgerow and the incredible amount of food production and diversity and habitat for wildlife that exists there, where you make it hazels, you make it plums, and you get uh, rugosa roses, and you get elderberries, and you get all kinds of diverse crops that can grow that really prefer that edge between a grazed pasture and a dense woodland that sweet spot that we create for them or that nature creates for them when two separate biomes meet up. So I don't want to spend too much time out in the sunshine or I'll get really sunburned. But the reason that I was hiding just behind me right here in the shade is because I really want to talk about this edge effect plant. It's one of my favorite edge effect plants and it is the thimbleberry. It's a native. It's beautiful. It can live very, very well under the shade of the elders here. It is a plant that can handle and enjoys full shade, enjoys a woodland setting, but it also really loves the edge and does exceptionally well here. And I find that for me, it's a beautiful plant, it has these beautiful soft leaves. actually really good. My kids used to play with them and use them as little napkins or plates when they would snack out in the garden. It produces these beautiful white flowers that our uh, native bees and honeybees really enjoy and it produces an edible crop of fruit that is wonderful to use in jams and jellies. It also is that nice kind of middle height between my high shade plants. And again, I have it growing under here in full shade, but it also is thriving in full sun here at that edge between the woodland area and where we're stepping out into the bright sun. A great example of an edge effect plant and how it really, really loves being on the margin between these two climate zones. How it does very well in one, but it does even better on the edge and then you see it backing away and not existing in the full sun. In permaculture design, we are looking at those things that work really well in nature to boost fertility, to increase abundance, to increase efficiency. And we can see that the edge effect is a wonderful example of how we can observe the increased diversity and take back some of those elements to our own garden. Look at the edge effects that already exist and look at how we can increase the percentage of edges in our current systems.
Because doing that, we can create a more diverse habitat, we can create more diverse microclimates, we can create more diversity of living things in our garden. What are the edges in your garden and what are the ways you can expand edges? Something like putting in an herb spiral where it's literally just edges and edges where you have a succession of, of very tiny differences in growing conditions that help different kinds of plants thrive. What about looking at um, how we can share and balance the equation to have some of the food forest design and some annual agriculture. And know that both of those can belong in a permaculture system and also having more than just a food forest, having patches of annual veggie beds can create an edge effect between food forest and annual veggie cultivation and therefore create a third opportunity for diversifying our landscape. I am gonna go take care of sick kiddos. Pretty much everybody in our household is down with COVID but me. So I am gonna go make the rounds and make some chicken soup and check on everybody. And then I'm gonna stay out in the garden as much as possible working uh, for when I inevitably probably get sick because this variant is so utterly contagious. And also because I wanna enjoy this beautiful spring day. So I may make another video. We'll see how things go this afternoon. I hope you are staying well, well and healthy. I hope that you are looking for opportunities to observe and harness the edge effect in your garden for the maximum benefit for your system and for you as a gardener. Thanks. I just want to make a little addendum here at the end of this video. I wish you guys could see how many carpenter bees and bumblebees and little tiny serotina bees and little parasitoid wasps are feeding off of these thimbleberries today. I'm trying to capture it with my camera, but the little serotina bees are like this big and so are the little tiny parasitoid wasps and it's hard to get them on camera, but oh my gosh, this plant is just absolutely full of a huge diversity of pollinators right now, all native pollinators. And that's what I'm talking about when I talk about the edge effect, creating diverse habitat for an increased abundance of wildlife.